I'm Pastor Carl, your host. Welcome to another Light for the Journey, where we take a look at uh, at uh, living this thing called the Christian life um, through the light of Scripture, um, how that plays out and works out in our in our life. Um, it is um, always in our interest to follow the Word of God and let it let it. Um, just permeate our lives as we walk this thing called life. Glad that you're with us tonight, and we have a full complement tonight. It's it's an exciting night for me. I always always like it when we have a full complement. Will not uh, before I before I get started on anything um, next week. Will not be doing light for the journey. I will not be here. I will be in uh, Fayette, Iowa. My oldest grandson is getting married. So. Um, it'll be a big weekend next week for us, um, and so we're going to cancel the uh, Light for the Journey for next weekend. Um, if you're joining us uh, tonight for the first, uh, on well, not just for the first time, but, uh, but if you are first time, welcome. We're so glad you're with us. Um, if you're joining us and you're coming through on um, YouTube, we, uh, we, we cat, uh, broadcast live on YouTube and on Facebook. Um, if you're joining us on YouTube... Um, you want, might want to go here to discoveroakhills.com. If you're on Facebook, we need to share this with you, too. If you're on Facebook and you want to be a part of the dialogue, we'd love to have you as a part of the dialogue. You will also want to come here. Um, that, um, <clears throat> and the reason I'm sending you there is, is because when you get on Discover Oak Hills, you go to the Light for the Journey link uh, on our webpage. It has two embedded windows. One is Discord, where we have a chat room, and you can join us in the chat room. And the other is um, the YouTube um, video as well. So you can see what's going on on the program and also be a part of the chat pro. Um, and if you want to join us, <clears throat> well, there's a couple ways to join us. Um, if you want to join us live on um, through, through live streaming through Zoom, um, Debbie was going to put it up here. Zoom, uh, this is the meeting ID that you need for Zoom and the passcode to get on Zoom. We'll leave that up for a couple minutes as I uh, take care of some other business. If you're on YouTube, be sure to like us. Be sure to subscribe. That always helps us. Um, and we like getting subscribers. Okay, I think I've done all the housekeeping. Let me just introduce um, our staff tonight. Um, back behind all the cameras, switching, producing, actually. Uh, it's cool. To, you can be, you too can be a producer. Um, pushing, really, she's our button pusher. She's pushing my button. She's pushing Tim's button. And to some degree, she's pushing Larry's button, is my wife, Debbie. Debbie, be nice when you push our buttons. <laughs> <laughs> In the studio, Tim. Good to have you tonight. Welcome. Glad you're here tonight. Good to be here. Yeah, you've been you've been away and and doing some fun things and sent your son off your, your baby. No, not your baby. Not my baby, but your yeah, younger young, son. My yeah, son. Yeah, yeah. He's the last to leave the nest. Last to leave the nest. Yes. <laughs> so yeah. Um, so you've been doing a lot of stuff. Uh, took him out to another state and dropped him off and said good riddance and <laughs> <laughs> and you're back. Um, and I'm back. We're glad you didn't tell us good riddance. <laughs> nope. I would never do that. You wouldn't do that. I would never do uh, that. And then uh, from Oregon, uh, Larry, uh, welcome. Good to have you, brother. Good to good to have you here with us tonight. And uh, hey, it's good to be here, Carl. Uh, thanks for having me. Let's uh, say welcome back, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, okay. Let's get let's just jump in and let's get going. Um, let's do the verse for first, honey, so that I don't forget. So many times I we don't get into it, and so I'm just going to read what I read this morning. But the key there is I really like that uh, 23rd and 24th verse. Um, Therefore, brothers, uh, since this is out of Hebrews by the Hebrews, the tenth chapter. Um, Therefore, brothers, since we have confidence uh, to enter the holy place by the blood of Jesus. Uh, by the new and living way that he opened for us through uh, through the curtain, that is, through his flesh. And since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart, I like that, in full assurance of faith, and with our hearts sprinkled clean from uh, an evil conscience, and our bodies washed with, uh, with pure water, 
Let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how to stir up, how you like that, one, one another to uh, love and to good works, not re neglecting uh, to meet together as, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day drawing near. Thank you, dear. Appreciate that. We got into the Word. We didn't neglect it. Don't want to neglect it. Want it to be a part of our lives. So, all right, Tim, you've been gone for a while. Are you ready for this? I think so. You think so? You're on yep. the hot seat, right? So did you, you um, let me share with my audience, uh, since since he took his son to college and dropped him off, you don't, you don't have uh, um, an assistant now, you know, you know no. like Batman and Robin. Uh, no. Nope. Yeah, your sidekick is gone. No, nope, it's, uh, it's. Or were you the sidekick? No, no, it, it's it's different now. Certainly, <laughs> it's just my wife and I at home, and uh, and so everything. I do, well, I shouldn't say I do everything. That that would be sound bad, but like everything outdoors, I do. Everything on cars now, I do. I don't have any helpers for anything. So, so you're on your own. But but it'll be good. It's, yeah, it's and you're good back in the back corner in our church on your own. Yeah, yeah, floundering yeah. For, right <laughs> when when for when I'm here. Yeah, it's, <laughs> my schedule seems to to be uh, uh, kind of full. <laughs> so were you able to pay attention? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, I, I that, that, that's attention. my point. Okay, yep. were you able to yep. pay attention? Yep. All right. Did you yep. learn anything new? You know, you know the so, girl. So I'll so be quiet. Way back in the day, uh, thirty some years ago, I don't know if you remember the song uh, by Steve Green. <laughs> Uh, it went something like, uh, he is faithful to complete it. He who began a good work in you is faithful to complete it. Yeah. And for that, that lyric popped into my mind because of the, uh, the focus on faithfulness, on God's faithfulness to us and how we should be faithful to him in return. And, uh, and I was just reflecting on that, uh, um, you know the fact that as Christians we we have the um, firm belief that God is with us always, and so whatever we face, we never face alone. And that that's such a huge, huge um, uh, not just a blessing, but it's a huge encouragement because, like you mentioned, when you're going through some difficult times or have some difficult tasks ahead, it's so much easier if you have somebody with you kind of yeah. helping you along or with you either physically or in spirit and here we are we have God with us all the time with us and, and I think a lot of times we lose sight of that we don't we don't realize how good we actually have it and we should be happier and we should be more encouraged than we are because this talks about you know the fact that God is with us and he's faithful and he's he's not gonna leave us and uh, uh, you, th you think of um, the uh, uh, close family members that you have and uh, the close friends that you have, and uh, God is even closer than that. Yeah. He's even closer than that. So, uh, you know, family members can move away or you can move away from family and, and friends can move and you can move away from friends, but you can't move away from God and God isn't going to abandon you and move away from you. Yeah. So I, I really that that's that would have preached, brother. No, but, I should have. <laughs> but, but I mean that that I, I I really was encouraged by that. You know the reminder that um, that you know God is faithful and we should be faithful. And then the other thing that that uh, you made a, a really strong connection to uh, the fact that um, uh, faithfulness on our part is a conscious action. So it doesn't happen by chance. Uh, if we want to be faithful to God, we have to plan to be faithful to mm -hmm. God, and then we have to execute on being faithful to God. It, it, you know, uh, just just like uh, if you read any um, uh, books from famous successful people, they always tell you that they plan to be successful. It didn't just, it wasn't a fluke, it didn't just happen, you know, just mm -hmm. randomly, but it was many actions on their part and, and same thing, our, uh, the way that we can be faithful is to plan to be faithful and then make that firm commitment and execute on that firm commitment. I implied it in my message today because I was talking about my marriage so much. 
Um, but but when you stop and you think about just just the whole the the marriage ceremony, it actually that oh, is yeah. what takes that's what takes place. Those promises, and I can't help but think about my my grandson who just got married. I two grandsons got married this summer. Oh wow! Um, <clears throat> yeah, and so my the grand Xander who just got married and he stood up there, he's weeping. I was weeping with him. I mean, uh, you know, the whole house is weeping. Uh, well, we were outside, but you know what I mean, and. Uh, you know, and he's, he's he's really belting it out because he wants everybody to hear as he as he in, intentionally is promising his fidelity in so many different aspects of it. You know, as they make the the, the promises one to another. Um, but that is what you're doing. It's an intentional decision to uh, to be faithful, and that's marriage is comprised of that too mm-hmm. in that relationship. Um, yeah, it is. It's intentional. Anything else? Uh, that's <coughs> it. I'll wait to see what Larry has to say. You're going to wait. Take us oh, off. Larry, we're, we're pushing it <laughs> off on you tonight. Well, let's go to Larry then. All right, Larry, you, you want to chime in here? You got some points you want to make or something you want to say? Well, you know, some people uh, some people uh, refer to faithfulness as, uh, as being loyal, you know. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and that is a part of it. I'm... Yes, that, that is very true. Yeah. Um, no, I, uh, I I was very fortunate that I got to listen to the entire worship service today, and uh, I, I was I truly come away from a blessing listening to that worship service because I could see God working in Debbie, and I could see God working in you today, and I'm I really really was a blessing to me so wow um thank you for that and in, in the fact the fact that you are are firm in your beliefs that you're standing true to what you believe in um just it's it's i'm just awestruck you know so, um yeah it's it's really something to me and i um Of course, I've I have a couple of years under my belt as far as being a believer, and uh, um, faithfulness to me is 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 so important. And mm. you know the the old saying that you know we we walk by faith and not by sight is so true. It is so true. So um, and. Being intentional, yeah, you know, as as Tim was saying, you know, we have to, we have to intentionally be faithful. We have to have that as part of our character, being faithful. <clears throat> well, <clears throat> amen. I, I I greatly agree. Thanks for the kudos, by the way. I was. Uh, just kind of a behind the scene things. And even my wife, I haven't shared this with my wife yet, uh, but we were singing um, Just As I Am, that, that last hymn. Um, and, and it struck me. <clears throat> and I had been worshiping. I was, I was blessed by so some, some many uh, of, the, of the songs and the words and um, some of our seniors. It, it's, 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 it's fun. Listen to them. Um, they are in what we have. We have like a coffee room, gathering room um, that doesn't show up on our videos. Um, <clears throat> that is behind on the opposite end of the sanctuary. Um, go across the hallway, and it's an open room, and, and they all gather there. Um, it's kind of like a watering hole, um, if you will. And um, you know the seniors there, and we have some new folks that come in, and and they hadn't sung a lot of these songs. These a little little more contemporary, um, although we're kind of not not that contemporary in our songs and and she was just going on about how how beautiful and how rich and deep the words are to all these songs that she had never heard and it's fun to watch them because they're they're in their um i would guess in their their 70s um and 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 they worship you know and they're they raise their hands and and you can tell they're learning the songs as they go and 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 just talking about that before service started um, and so I was, I was getting blessed. I was being blessed by, by the, the, 
the depth of and meaning of a lot of what we were singing and just you know contemplating it. But when we got to Just As I Am, and it dawned on me, um, when I first started going to church, and I was stuck going to church for six months, I was not a believer, and my grandfather sold his car, so I was taking him to church and had to go to church and, um, <clears throat> and didn't want to be in church. And, it's, and, I, and I remember uh, every week they would sing Just As I Am. They would do an old-fashioned altar call, and every week I'd hang on to the back of the pews, you know, and it seemed like that song would just never end. And, of course, they got 40, at least 40 verses of Just As I Am. And there I am singing it this morning, and I'm thinking, oh, Lord, what a change. And, and the words, you know, uh, just as I am without one, without one plea, you know. Um, and and I, there was just no containing the tears. And I was like, Lord, I got to go. I got to go pray in just a moment. And I'm trying to get composure. And I'm worshiping, and I'm so blessed. And <clears throat> um, yeah, yeah, it, it was, um, I thank my wife. For what she does and Miss Nelly for what they play and just all that just just prepare and I I don't know I don't know maybe I'm getting old and soft I I don't know but I sure do love Jesus and I sure was blessed today but thank you for the kudos my friend appreciate it that's the backstory on that um, God was just all right touching me in a, in a oh way. by the way I, I wanted to I wanted to tell you that at yeah your uh, first United song has been recorded so. My, our what? Say it again. You're bursting out in song during worship service has been recorded. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I have to hum a little softer. <laughs> How, however, however, I was I was kind to you and edited out of the video. You're the man. <laughs> You're the man. <laughs> <laughs> You gotta have partners that you can count on. I tell you. <laughs> <laughs> well, we we just wanted to. I just wanted to give you a personal laugh that way. See, <laughs> they can't hear me. Um, well, they can on the live feed, of course. So yeah, I, I'll stop doing that. <laughs> I can't help it. I I just can't help it. You gotta sing to the Lord. Okay. Um, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. You know, faithfulness. And you and you Basically, right. you had. Pardon? Go ahead. I didn't hear you. No, I said, I'm, go, ahead. Uh, go ahead. Go ahead. Said you had mentioned something during worship about uh, about preaching to the choir. Well, no, you're not preaching to the choir. You're preaching to all of us that need to reorient and relearn. So, <laughs> <laughs> Amen to that. I heard a, I heard an old preacher. Yeah, he said it to me. You know, I, th I was talking about preaching to choir, and he said, "Yeah." He said, "But I just want to remind you, even choirs have to have rehearsals." <laughs> I said, "Touche. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. good." Um, yeah, that's what they yeah. say. Sometimes you have to go back. Sometimes you have to go back to the fundamentals. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we do, um, and we have to remember. Um, Sometimes it's just a matter of showing up, and sometimes, you know, and, 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 and it's interesting because I don't want it to be, a, a, I didn't, uh, and I know God doesn't either. This isn't a message about, you know, church attendance. Uh, faithfulness is so much more than church attendance. People need to take vacations. People, Tim, for what it's worth, people need to take their sons to school and take the time and you know, th those things are important. Um, this was not a message on that. This is this is a message about us determining that we're going to be God's person because God has been our person and our Savior. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and so it, it wasn't really preaching to the choir so much as it was, uh, uh, the way I took it was a gentle reminder that, you know, you can count on God, he's in your corner, and he's there with you today, and he's going to be with you tomorrow. And he's going to be with you the next day when, when you have some kind of trial come up, and you can count on that. Mm -hmm. And, and if, if you if you uh, bring that to the forefront of your thinking, that's got to shape your attitude. That's got to shape how you handle yeah. stress, and uh, stre well, how you handle stressful situations without becoming stressful. And, and if you can do that, I think you can live. Uh, such a happier life. Yeah, uh, uh, a fulfilled life. Right. There's a peace. God brings a peace. And there's a contentment. You can learn to be content and a joy 
Um, I'm going through some things right now that just kind of upset my apple cart at work mm -hmm. and um, turned my life upside down and, um, you know, just, just going through some things that caused me um, some lack of sleep, mm -hmm. you know, some depression, you know, <laughs> and, it's just, and it's a tough thing that I'm going through. Um, and I can't really say because um, I'm under obligation to not, um, um, and I have to hold confidentiality. Um, but, but as I go through that, you know, so what we're not saying is that God, it's not that these things don't happen to you. It's not that we don't, we don't go through the gamut of emotions because, you know, uh, those are psychological and mm -hmm. emotional stuff that go with the package. Right. But you still, you're right. You're still, and I think it's hard for us because um, short of Jesus Christ coming to earth, God is an invisible God, and the only picture we have of him is of Jesus. And, and he came 2,000 years ago, more than 2,000 years ago. And so it's, it's a little harder for us as, as uh, finite beings to, to keep that. I, I think it's, a it's part of the struggle mm -hmm. to keep that picture. You're, you're so right that you would touch on that tonight. You know, um, that's what was going through my head when you're saying it. You know, uh, that God is with us. We, we, even though we don't see him, He's there, and we have these experiences. So, yeah, I'm, I'm doing all the talk. I'm sorry, but but it's so cool. No, no, and and, and that that was something. Uh, so so my son before he left, uh, he would uh, uh, um, waver between or, or or bounce between excitement, you know, to start this next phase of his life, and and then uh, concern or worry or anxiety about you know because he hasn't hadn't met his roommate. Uh, he wasn't sure, that. you know, if he was going to be able to function, you know, he's going to be on this campus and there's going to be a lot of people and he's going to be living in a dorm and there's a lot of people and he's sort of an introvert. He isn't sort of, he's a definite introvert. Yeah, so, so he had, he had, you know, he would go from one extreme to the <laughs> other and it was like, I'm, I'm thinking like, oh, just let his first day be a good day. And, mm -hmm. and, and uh, I, I have to admit that we, we had a shaky start because... We left much later than we wanted to leave and drove into the wee hours of the morning and uh, yeah, basically got three hours of sleep the <laughs> night before oh my. the big move-in day. Uh -huh. And uh, um, But then that, you know, uh, that, that day went flawlessly. I mean, it really went flawlessly. And God is good. Yeah. Oh, God is really good. I mean, that that first day was just such a blessing for me, and uh, I actually stopped and I talked to uh, one of the staff. They have, uh, you know, it's they they close off streets and have streets going one way, and and there's people coming, and there's there's lots of staff and student volunteers directing traffic and and helping people uh, find the right place to be and where to go and, and everything. And I stopped and I talked to one gentleman that was directing traffic, and I said, "Do you ever get tired of this?" Because because what I what I felt was I felt this great sense of relief that my son felt like he was fitting in, but then I also felt like wow there's all this energy of all these kids coming here mm -hmm. and it was just something that i haven't you know you don't see it in our congregation all that kid well energy. yeah but I, I mean i i it was something i haven't reflected on you know from previous days in college and then i'm trying to think of my first day in college and it's like yeah i guess i was a little nervous myself and uh i never really thought about other kids being nervous or anything but then i'm thinking like you know uh, if, if you focus on that, you're not going through this. You're not the only one going through this. Mm -hmm. Everyone's moving away from home, and everyone's going into a new spot, into this melting pot of the school. And uh, so everyone's got, to some extent, got their lives uh, ratcheted up and, and, and moved on to a, a new level. And then your sermon this morning, when it was talking about the fact that God is faithful, and, and we're called to be faithful, uh, I, it just struck me that if you could live that every day, you'd have a better day every day. Just yeah. live that consciously and, 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 you know, write yourself a little note saying God is faithful and he's with me today. Mm -hmm. and, it's, and look at that the first thing in the morning and then, and then see how the rest of your day goes. Amen. Amen. And he is. He is so faithful and, yeah. and wonderful. And he cannot be unfaithful. Um, 
you know, even if we're unfaithful, he, he remains true and he remains faithful. And, uh, oh my goodness, you can rely on him. Yeah. Can't preach it any better. I can't, right. Yeah. Well done. Well done. Well, uh, let, let's, you know, I don't, I'm trying not to, to make these one hour programs. I'm trying to keep them 30 minutes um, so that folks will watch them because I, I just think there's a lot, there's just a lot of good, uh, rich stuff here. And you guys bring such wonderful uh, insights to it as well. Um, Larry, I, I, since how Debbie's got you up, popped you up there, uh, we'll start with you. You know, if, if any thoughts, anything you want to leave our audience with about God and his faithfulness and our faithfulness back to him? Anything you would say? Well, you know, in this day and age, it's, um, it's hard for a younger person to get the concept down walking by faith and not by sight. Um, it's one of those things where, you know, you just, you just need to believe. You know, you just need to believe that he's there, he's walking beside you. And uh, all I can, all I can uh, relate to is, is the footprints in the same, mm. you know. And, uh, yeah, that's, I mean, 50-some years ago, I was in the same position as Adam was in this last couple of weeks, you know. Um, I don't know if any of you are familiar with Penn State University, but uh, that's where I got my sheepskin and uh, in vocational agriculture. And uh, at the time I started there, uh, we were on 10 week terms. And if you can imagine a uh, 18, uh, 17 year old kid going onto a main campus of a large university and on the main campus itself, there were over 35,000 students and, uh, Penn state itself has over at that time, it had over 110,000 students. So in, uh, not, not only the main campus, but also in, uh, around a dozen satellite campuses. So right? large, large university. And there you are with, a, you know, Larry, just a number, you know. To, to put it into perspective, <laughs> to put it in perspective then um, in, in background, um, you're, you're 17. What was the size of your hometown that you were coming out of? I mean, what, uh, how big was it? Where, where were you? Where do you hail home? You know, I was... When you were seventeen and headed the hometown, I was coming yeah. like five hundred. Oh my goodness! <laughs> my, yeah, yeah, five hundred. Yeah, that's culture. And I ended up on, and I ended up on the main campus of Penn State University that had over thirty-five thousand students on main campus. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Tim's right. That is culture shock. You, you, yeah. Yeah. And you were yeah. a believer at the time, then, is what I'm getting. Yeah. Were you uh, a believer at yeah. the time? Yeah. I, I was, I, I'd been a believer for a couple of years. I had actually accepted Christ when I was 16. So. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah. Yeah. It and, was a uh, difficult transition, and I can fully <clears throat> empathize with Adam. So. <laughs> sure. Yeah, I, I can't imagine what that would be like for you. Um, you know, I grew up in Akron, Ohio, uh, even my graduating, just my graduating class was 385 students just in my graduating class. And some of my grandkids uh, in these small towns are graduating classes like 20 students, you know, <laughs> and, uh, yeah. yeah, you know, the whole, the whole school is less than 300, uh, um, that's, that's seventh grade through 12th, um, you know, in, in, Back to, to, to the subject, though, as we're walking, and you keep talking about this, and I keep thinking this, um, and just for our viewers' sake, you know, you're talking about walking by faith and uh, living by faith and, and doing things by faith. And, and the word that keeps coming to me, you know, because some of it's just syntax, the, the descriptives that we use, um, which it's hard to describe, you know, this thing, walking with God is, is very uh, complex. 
but trust the word the word you know um, where you might use living by faith for, for for somebody who doesn't you know quite you know will I trust God will I put my trust in God and can God put his put his trust in me to be what I need to be you know that I know that's what you mean walking by faith but but perhaps somebody in our audience doesn't have the the background where Christians are coming from and just for the the audience sake you know just kind of adding that in but but yeah, I, I totally agree with you, brother. Go ahead. Anything else? Did we cover it? Okay. Oh, I, I, I'm. <laughs> I'm just giving I'm okay. you an opportunity, Tim. Yeah. Go, Go ahead, Tim. It. Go ahead, Tim. Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so, so yeah, I, I mentioned that Steve Green song, and so that was actually a, a verse out of uh, Philippians chapter one, uh, verse four, and in in this. Um, in this uh, translation, it says, "Being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry on, carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus." And I think in in the actual song, it was, uh, "He who began a good work in you will be faithful to complete it." So, so that's that was why I tied it in mm-hmm. to your faithfulness uh, sermon. And again, you know, the fact that you know, if we stay. Uh, if we keep reminding ourselves of the fact that God is faithful and He's going to be with us, that that should shape our our um, attitude for whatever we have to face because we're not doing it alone. We're doing it yeah. with God at our side. Well, this could have been a better light for the journey. You know, how does how does the Word of God filter into li- uh, into our lived out lives? Yeah, you guys are awesome. Thank you, Larry. Thank you, Tim. Sure. And thank you, Miss Debbie, for switching those cameras the way you do and pushing our buttons so well. Um, you put a wonderful bow on it. Um, prayer concerns. Let's let's wrap this thing up with prayer. Um, any prayer concerns? I think Adam. Go, what, Miss Debbie? Bubby. Yep, yep. Her brother, uh, Phil. She calls him Bubby. Um, Dennis. Huh? Dennis. Oh, yeah, and Dennis. Um, Dennis, our Dennis. Mm. So, yeah. How about any for you? So, yeah, for Adam to just have a good first week when classes start this next uh, mm-hmm. uh, Have week. you talked to him? Have you heard uh, from yeah, him? Yeah, I've t- talked to him a couple of times. I talked to him yesterday as we were driving back and talked to him again uh, after church this afternoon. And he was too busy to talk, so he's gonna. That's a good call, sign. He's gonna call me after I get home from okay, here. Cool. But then also next weekend we're going to see uh, actually our um, the pastor and his wife that of the church when I was thirty uh, some years ago in Minneapolis uh, on a temporary assignment, and uh, it was the church I attended there that uh, Barb had a stroke. And so uh, prayers for her and that she can recover okay. from that. Yeah. Larry, how about on your end? Any prayers, prayer concerns? Or? No, I'd just, uh, just like to uh, lift up Marion. She's, uh, she's going through some tests and, and some determinations. And, uh, mm-hmm. uh, she, she, needs, she needs prayer. Okay. Also, uh, like to lift up her brother that uh, is, uh, I'm not going to mention his name, but sure. uh, he, he is, is really suffering from, from his uh, uh, service over in Vietnam and, uh, okay. and the results of being exposed to Agent Orange. So, mm. oh. so, yeah. Okay. All right. Well, I'll, I'll open. Would one of you guys like to close? Should I flip the coin? All right, Tim. He's sure. raising his hand. You sure. can't see it, Larry, but he raised his hand. So, all I'll, right. I'll You'll volunteer close. to close. All yes. Right. <laughs> let's, let's go to the Lord. Uh, Lord Jesus, we just come to you tonight and uh, grateful for this program, grateful for these, these um, men of God who... Um, who gather in and uh, throw their two cents in and sometimes say it so much better than I could ever. Um, I thank you for them. We come to you tonight and we lift these concerns that, um, that we've mentioned uh, for Philip, um, for Dennis, uh, for Marion. Um, as we 
as we mention their names, Lord, and by name, you know what's going on with them. You know, Lord, they, they matter to us. We pray uh, tonight for Adam and uh, ask that you be with him. Um, and we just uh, ask you to be with this, um, this brother and brother-in-law who has served um, and um, has done things, Lord, that are difficult for anybody to do. And yet it was out of... Um, out of love for his his country and fellow man, and we just ask that you would you would be with him in a special way, to, um, that you would touch him physically and you would help him, um, Lord, as he's been exposed to chemicals. Um, <clears throat> Lord, we thank you for your faithfulness to us. There's well, tonight these guys did a great job of trying to describe it something that is indescribable and uh, all I know Lord is is that it's it's better experienced than talked about and we just thank you that's all we can do is thank you thank you for our audience I thank you for this technology I thank you for this program and for those who are dedicated to it I ask your blessings upon them um, this is my prayer in Jesus name and I pray that you'd be with Tim as he closes this time together Lord, we just thank you again for the faithfulness that you've shown in our lives and for the fact that we can always count on you to be with us through whatever trials and difficulties uh, we may face. And uh, we know you as our creator. We know you as our savior. Mm -hmm. We know you as our friend. And uh, it's just an awesome thing to be able to count on someone like yourself for everything that we face in life. And Father, we just also, I, I want to pray for my friend Barb, um, who, who had a stroke, uh, that you be with her mm -hmm. and with her family as, uh, as she's recovering and just grant her a full recovery. And um, Lord, just remind us that, uh, that you're with us and you are stronger than any problem and bigger than any problem that we might face. And let that encourage every believer that's listening. We pray for all of these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And, amen. and I didn't break out in song. Uh, I know. We should be happy. <laughs> well, if uh, thank you guys again for being a part of this tonight. Um, if you're looking for a church and you happen to be in Rochester, Minnesota, this is our location, and the building in the back there is uh, our, our church where we uh, congregate. It's uh, located at 41028th Street, Rochester, Minnesota. Our worship services start at 1030, and of course we do like the journey um, at 630, um, and we're glad that you joined us tonight. I hope you found this uh, helpful and, uh, and, and a blessing to you. Good night, everyone, and God bless.